Hey, I wanted to uh, clarify. Uh, I just did a recent video. I think I entitled it uh, like Obama and uh, Midwest flood and the storm. And you know, I think uh, I may have scared a few folks. You know, uh, the Bible is very clear that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. But the Bible is also very clear that in the last days, it says perilous time will come. It says men will be lovers of their own selves, uh, boasters, proud, blasphemous, uh, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, uh, without natural affection, false accusers, fierce, despising of those that are good. It says these having a form of godliness deny the power of God. And uh, it does a comparison at the time of Moses that, you know, Moses, uh, you know, you know, signs and miracles and wonders were done by the hands of Moses. But it also says that there was these guys named Janus and Jambres, and it says they withstood Moses. And basically, as far as we know, they used magical arts and did some of the very, you know, signs basically, you know, obviously not exactly as, you know, the, the true God did through the hands uh, of Moses, but you know, there was some stuff out there that just wasn't of God. And the enemy always tries to bring a counterfeit wherever there is truth. Uh, that's in dreams and visions. Uh, that's in many aspects of the prophetic. Uh, that's in almost any aspect of life. I mean, God gives supernatural dreams. The devil gives nightmares. Um, God is into astronomy because he made the stars, but the devil's got astrology. You know, God is into Bible numerics. Uh, the enemy has twisted that into a form of numerology. So uh, there's all kinds of areas in God's kingdom that Satan has counterfeited. In regard to the prophetic, you know, the prophetic is not to bring fear. Uh, the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. But there are definite warnings, definite judgments uh, that are in the Bible. And we as the people of God, if we are living in sin, if we're living outside of the will of God, if we have direct rebellion in our heart, we just know that uh, we are just doing something that's hurting ourselves, hurting others, and, you know, if discovered, you know, would bring detriment, you know, to all those around us, basically. You know, it's those areas that, in a sense, you have to have a healthy fear because consequences will come eventually. Well, you know, this deal about Obama being in Israel. Now, if you think my wife went to bed on the night of March 8th thinking about Obama, I'm just telling you that she did not. It wasn't even part of the conversation, and it is not usually. So I knew that when she had that dream, and I had the dream of the flooding, I knew that that was the Holy Spirit. In fact, I woke up with a very strong anointing. I said I was in the uh, – Kim Weir had a, a meeting, and it was about – you know, seven-hour meeting, and there's just a very strong anointing and presence of the Holy Spirit. So I knew very specifically, you know, that, that the Lord, you know, had touched me during that, and I knew there was a strong anointing on me. Anyways, so I woke up that morning, and uh, I, I can always tell when the Holy Spirit gives me a dream because he wakes me up right after that dream. So I remember it so clearly. It's as though it just happened. So I, I don't have any problem remembering it or the details, because he wakes me up immediately afterwards, and I can just sense that anointing just kind of, just kind of pulls, you know. Anyways, it's, I don't really, it's hard to explain in the, in the natural realm, supernatural realities, but I knew the second I woke up that I was just given a dream by the Holy Spirit. Now, in my experience, as I shared, I was in a community where they were honoring Christ. I saw Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, the devil doesn't give dreams that have Christ in you, the hope of glory. He just doesn't do it. But anyways, and uh, it was a contrast. It was the community that received Christ, that gave him a public honor and glory, was blessed. The children were blessed. The people around were blessed. Uh, and it was a, it was a you know, very, you know, middle class to poor neighborhood. It wasn't a very wealthy neighborhood, but they had a wealth that others didn't have. Then the next scene was is people were, you know, and, and, you know, even Jesus talked about people were, you know, at the time of Noah, he said, uh, when he would come, he said it would be like the days of Noah. And it says people were, you know, planning, people were building, people were marrying. They were just doing common things. And in this experience, I was in this, like, boat. It was like a house boat. It had a, like, bubble, clear plastic, you know, 
whole bubble all the way around it. And while I was inside, people were just in, I'm just in the middle of this park, kind of like Noah while he was building the ark, and everybody was all around him. They probably mocked him. They probably laughed him. And maybe the people were saying, oh, look at that guy. He's got a houseboat in the middle of the park. It would make no sense. And uh, trust me, I didn't go to bed thinking about a houseboat with plastic all the way around. That is the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was thinking at that moment about the days of Noah. He was thinking about Noah's ark being lifted up above the water so the people, you know, inside and the animals didn't drown. And I'm telling you before God that I'm in there, everything's fine, it's a beautiful, peaceful day, and all of a sudden the wind and rain is at this angle, and it happened so fast, so suddenly, and I mean, I saw sticks like projectiles shooting, I mean, so this wind was powerful, blowing trees down, taking branches off, and I told all the 20 people with me, even though it was all the way around, I said, duck, and every head went down, my head went down, and I want to say this, the Bible says that every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and glory to God the Father. And so I believe that in a sense, even though we were ducking because of what was going on on the outside, it was a spiritual analogy that those that have bowed their knee to Jesus, those to whom Jesus is Lord, those that are following the will of God and are honoring publicly in their life Christ in you, the hope of glory, that they are in a bubble, they're in a protection in these last days. Well, the people in this park suddenly, I mean, it happened so fast, literally, our boats, our houseboat was lifted up above it. And I'm telling you, the water was at least 20 feet high. It could have been more, but it was it was a huge river. And the people, it, this was not the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This was a flood bringing devastation, and people were floating in it, just like you see in some of these several countries. But I knew this was America. Now, I can't say 100% sure it was Illinois, but for some reason the dream, I was thinking I was in Illinois. So I just have to say that one thing I know is there's a river called the Mississippi that runs between, you know, Missouri and Illinois. And, uh, and I'm telling you that it timed out with, with my dream and my wife's dream with Obama. These two seem to be tied in. Now, there was a guy on Sid Roth's program. I don't even know his name, man, Walden or, you know, something. Anyways, I don't even know. And uh, he said the Holy Spirit spoke to him. And I totally didn't even know about this. I just, you know, found the information. He said that a voice like the audible word of the Lord came to him and said that if you divide my land, I will divide your land. Now, I don't know all the implications of this, but I'm telling you, this was a revelation from a couple of years ago as far as I know. And, and, and so this was publicly made known. And so, you know, here again, March 8th, my wife is just, you know, asleep in bed. I'm asleep in, in bed, and we have simultaneous dreams related to the same subject. We're in the last days. Noah's Ark is being lifted up above the water. I think I'm in the Midwest in the dream. I mean, that's where I live, so it would just seem like it would be that. I don't know why I dream about some other place. And at the same time, I didn't even know Obama was on his way to Israel, you know, getting ready to, you know, work out the details to divide Israel. So I'm just telling you, this is something we need to pray about, something we need to seek God about. This was revelation, and there's always a reason for revelation. God just doesn't give it at random. You know, when Noah heard that, uh, you know, there was a flood coming, he prepared himself and built an ark. And I'm telling you that the ark is, is bowing to the knee of Jesus. It's getting your house in order. If, you know, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household shall be saved. So if you want to be protected in these last days, if you want to, you know, have that bubble around you where you can see all that's going around you. The Bible says that you will see the reward of the wicked, yet it will not touch you. It says a thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, and it will not touch you. So we don't have to have fear. But uh, if you read Isaiah 24 and Hosea chapter 4, it says because of the sin of the people of the land and their leadership and even their priests, you know, they're, they're supposed to be their spiritual leaders, it says the land will mourn and, and those who live in it will perish. And I'm telling you, this was a last day dream that God was saying that if you go directly contrary against my known will and mess with areas that I told you not to go near, there are natural consequences. The land will be affected and people will be affected. Now, this might be one or two years out. It might be three years. I don't know how long it was. I was not given a detail. But there was a sign that I never shared with anybody that I saw 
And the moment I see that sign, I have a feeling that God's going to have me speaking about this more. But I'm telling you right now, look, if, you, if Jesus isn't your Lord and Savior, call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. Because we really are in times of unprecedented harvest as never before. And God is getting ready to do a new thing in the earth. And he wants you to be involved. He doesn't want to leave you out. He doesn't want you on the outside. That's why he gives revelation to get you prepared. Prepare you the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. So anyway, it's, it's a heavy message because God loves you. God is for you. God is not against you. God loves your family. He loves your kids. But, you know, if you can't honor the Savior, the Son of God who gave his life for you on the cross, if you cannot honor men and women of God, if you cannot honor the Word of God, how are you going to be ready to stand in the days that are coming? You will not be able to stand. So I just want to encourage you that the revelation was is let's make a public display of our faith in Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus said, unless you, you know, acknowledge me publicly, if you, if you don't acknowledge me publicly, then I will not acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. But he said, if you acknowledge me publicly, then I will make uh, you known to my Father and to the holy angels. And so what he's basically saying is, is that, remember, in the beginning of the dream, I saw Christ in you. The hope of glory was a public display bringing glory to God Almighty. And that's what God wants in these last days, that we use our life to help bring the gospel, the good news, that Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you, and he rose again so you might have eternal life with him in heaven forevermore. And uh, don't be left out of this. Don't be out in the cold. Don't be, you know, in the river of destruction. Choose the river of life, and both you and your household shall be saved. So it's a hard message, I know, but it's the truth, and only the truth will set you free. Isn't that right? All right. Hey, thanks for your time, man. God bless you.